All right, let's briefly talk about uh, non-deliverable Ford contracts. Uh, these, they're not as interesting or, or uh, they are very interesting. They're not as um, maybe may prevalent as simply uh, hedging with Fords and Futures. Uh, I forgot to mention when we were talking about Fords and Futures that uh, what's interesting is when you go into a financial crisis because of the counterparty risk, all of a sudden you can see a lot more trading in futures markets uh, as people, you know, in Boeing and Toyota, uh, there's not a lot of counterparty risk in normal times, but in a financial crisis, they get worried and actually start trading on an exchange. So you can see a real boost in trading uh, in uh, futures markets during a crisis. Not because there's more trading, just there's more trading on exchange. Uh, but uh, non-deliverable Fords aren't as widely used as, um, as Fords and futures. However, they're really interesting to understand. Uh, the really interesting idea is so that, and they're somewhat informative as to what we can do with derivatives. Uh, and what sort of trades we can do in other markets. So the idea of a non-deliverable Ford contract is that there might be some currency that is a little bit hard to get a hold of. So I may, I may need to hedge a particular currency, but uh, I, don't, uh, I don't want to actually transact in that currency. So what we'll do is I'll hedge in that currency and we'll actually settle uh, in U.S. dollars. So all the payments are going to be in, in U.S. dollars, uh, but it's going to hedge movements in another currency. So, for example, let's say, let's say we need, uh, let's keep things simple. Uh, we need, uh, what should we say, uh, 10, um, 10 million uh, Mexican pesos in, in 90 days. So we need 10 million Mexican pesos in 90 days. And, and let's just say, there, there, are, there is trading in the Ford and Futures markets in Mexican pesos, but let's just say uh, we're, we're, we're not going to trade in, uh, um, or, or the bid-ask spreader, or for some reason we're not going to trade in, and uh, uh, the, the, the Ford and Futures market for this currency has dried up fundamentally. So we're going to enter into a trade um, on the Mexican peso, but settle it in U.S. dollars. So the idea here is what we can do is we can uh, meet uh, 10 million Mexican pesos in 90 days. Um, I'm going to go through the example here. Well, I'll make up, I'll make, I'll make up numbers. Uh, but let's say uh, we're going to, uh, the, 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 the rent we'll here, uh, use here is the uh, um, Mexican Central Bank. So we'll trade at the Mexican Central Bank reference rate. So this is just the exchange rate posted by the Mexican Central Bank right, in 90 days. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to hedge such that um, if this, we'll, we'll say the spot rate today, the spot rate today is 10 cents per Mexican peso. And what we'll do is we'll hedge here in such a way that um, we, we guarantee, uh, of course what this implies is if we need 10 million Mexican pesos, that this is going to cost us 1 million US dollars. So we'll hedge that. We'll say uh, we want to make sure that it only costs us 1 million um, US dollars in uh, 90 days if we need 10 million Mexican pesos. Uh, there's no reason to say that we can't bake a premium into this. So what we could do is we could say it's the Mexican Central Bank uh, in 90 days plus a half a cent. So we can build a premium into just you know plus a half a cent or minus half a cent, meaning we can uh, build a, a implicit appreciation or depreciation of the dollar, the Mexican peso, into this by just making this reference, you know, some linear function of this reference rate, or just some, the reference rate plus or minus some some uh, discount or premium. But what we'll do here is just say it is the reference rate such that um, such that we are ensuring that we only need one million dollars to to buy to get ten million Mexican pesos. So the idea of the way this will work is in ninety days. In ninety days, um, uh, let's say, for example, um, it, it is. 11 cents per Mexican peso. So if it's 11 cents per Mexican peso, that means the Mexican peso uh, went up versus the dollar. The Mexican peso went up 10% 10, uh, 10 versus the dollar. So the idea here is, um, uh, the, in the non-deliverable contract, we are paid 
Um, so we are going to be paid uh, 11 cents minus 10 cents times the, the, the reference amount. This, this is off the notional amount, 10 million. So this is going to be $100,000. We are paid $100,000. So now what we can do is if we, you know, we really need this 10 million Mexican pesos, we go out to the, to the spot market, which again is going to be more liquid than, than a futures market, why we have to do this. Uh, we go out to the spot market and we buy 10 million Mexican pesos. What this costs us is, you know, the cost to buy 10 million Mexican pesos is now at a, at a spot rate of, of 11 cents is 1.1 million. But then we are paid uh, 100,000 from the non-deliverable forward contract. So then we can deduct that from our costs and it's 0 0.1 million. So our cost to buy the 10 million Mexican pesos is the 1 million, like we said. So it worked, good. Uh, alternatively, we could sit here and say, okay, well, let's say uh, the US dollar appreciated. So alternative case, um, the Mexican peso is 0 0.09 per Mexican peso. So in this case, the dollar, uh, I need some chalk here. Ooh, good, excellent. Yes. Uh, uh, in this case, the dollar appreciated. The Mexican peso went down. So the way this is going to work is we pay, um, this implies we pay 100000 So our cost, when we go out to the spot market and we get Mexican pesos, it's only $0.09 cents per Mexican peso. So for us to buy the 10 million Mexican pesos, it only costs us $900,000. Uh, of course, we have to pay 100000 on the non-deliverable forward contract. So that's, we add $100,000, and this is equal to our 1 million. So the non-deliverable forward ensures that uh, no matter what happens to the Mexican peso, we pay, uh, it's going to cost us um, 1 million US dollars to buy 100, uh, 10 million Mexican pesos. So it works. And the nice thing here is we never have to transact in Mexican pesos. Of course, um, if, we, you know, if, if we're actually going to build something in Mexico, then we'll have to go to the spot market and transact. But the idea of hedging here is, is we're settling in US dollars, so it's very convenient. So um, the one thing to think about, however, and this is interesting, particularly when we talk about mortgage markets, uh, which we won't do in this class, obviously, but in institutions we talk about mortgage markets, is that uh, while this should be used by a multinational corporation who, uh, or, or is often used by a multinational corporation who actually needs 10 million Mexican pesos, there's no, um, there's no requirement that, that uh, I actually need 10 million Mexican pesos. So I could certainly, if I was a large enough investor, use this to speculate. Uh, and the interesting thing here is, there's no reason why I can't scale this notional amount up. And often, when I want to scale the amount, I want to scale, uh, let me use the term bet, if I want to scale my bet up a lot, uh, often I can't, I, I, there's not that enough to buy in the market. So in other words, we all know that I can buy 100 shares of stock, but once I want to buy, you know, uh, a million shares of stock, it becomes much more difficult uh, to, to, there's not enough available at the market at any given point in time. So for example, think of, uh, and this is just why you, you can kind of think of contracts like this and, and the possibility here. But let's say I want to uh, speculate in mortgage markets. Well, uh, I could use something like this where, okay, I'll, I'll say this is the, uh, instead of talking about the Mexican Central Bank rate, I'll talk about um, the default, you know, something like the default rate on mortgages in Arizona. So I could, I could we're just setting this as a reference rate. So I could make a, a, a contract like this such that if the default rate goes up by one basis point, you pay me uh, 10 million if the, if the, if the, um, if the, if the default rate goes down by um, uh, a basis point, I pay you 10 million. So, uh, and of course, we can scale the notional amount up to any size that we want. So if we want to say that, you know, that it's 11, 15 million for, a, you know, a, a movement for a, a single base, basis point move, we can certainly do that. In fact, we could make the notional amount more than there are actually mortgages in Arizona. So just throwing out a number, let's just, uh, uh, let's say if there's 50 billion uh, of outstanding mortgages in Arizona, there's no reason why we couldn't use such a contract to, uh, with a notional amount of 60, 70 uh, billion of, of, of contracts in Arizona. Not to say that we will, but the idea here is there's nothing linking. We don't actually have to purchase the underlying. So there's nothing really um, 
holding, limiting the size of the bet as if we actually had to go out and get the mortgages in Arizona. So what you can see from this is these are very useful. There's, there's a lot of reasons why we have these in markets. Uh, however, um, you can see how this becomes a little bit uh, difficult to say, you know, when are these, you know, uh, uh, I don't think there should be any limitations on these, but uh, the idea of uh, it's it's not always you know you can you can do you can let's say do dangerous things with these you you can uh, scale up bets too much there's no natural limitation um, and you can really set a reference rate to to whatever you'd like so they're they're very this idea of just setting a reference rate in a notional amount and having a derivative based on that is is widely used across markets of course as we know from mortgage markets. Uh, bets maybe 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 got a little bit too big, uh, uh, and hence um, you know some banks got into some trouble. However, um, this is a very it's very useful. I you know I should do another lecture just on going into to very um, instances where you would want to use this. Where like like we're going on here, I I'm going to build something in Mexico, but but the, the Ford market isn't there uh, for me to actually um, uh, to transact in Mexican pesos, so I'll settle in dollars. There's a lot of instances where the, the market may be illiquid, so I don't want to actually trade in um, in the asset uh, that's underlying the derivative. Uh, so I'll just set a notional amount of reference rate. Um, you know, you can think of, you know, maybe I, I'm, I'm thinking of building um, uh, a large hydroelectric dam in Brazil, right? So I have, I have, a, I have a lot of risk that uh, the electricity prices could go down. So uh, what I want to do is I want to short, uh, um, I want to short uh, the, the, the bonds or the stock of electricity pr producers in Brazil, but it may be very hard to, 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 to find anybody that's willing to let me borrow the bonds or the stock so that I can short them. So what I do is I say, okay, I go to a bank and I, I say, I want to um, short this amount of Brazilian electricity producers' bonds, um, this notional amount in using this rate of you know, delinquency on, 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 on those bonds. And, and this will allow me to hedge my investment in a large hydroelectric plant. So given this ability to, to hedge, I will more likely make that investment in Brazil than without that ability to hedge. So uh, very important, um, very useful in many situations. Of course, uh, of course, they can be used in many situations when they're not terribly useful and they're just speculating. Uh, but uh, good. So I hope that's uh, to some extent interesting. Uh, next. We have to talk about options. Good. Options. 